Welcome to part two of unit one of Solution Plus's Mobility as a Service training. My name is John Paddington. I'm a senior manager at Ertico. My background is in intelligent transport systems. I've worked about 20 years developing projects around technology for public transport. In this unit, we're going to cover three different areas. The first is why should you digitize your data? What are the benefits to your customer? The second is the different types of data you could digitize and the value of them. And thirdly, some lesson learned and experience from different areas around the world. So as a starting point for digitization of data, it's good to understand your customers and what, what do they what do they need? How 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 would they seek information? What are they trying to understand? What, what's important to them? Also, particular needs for different types of users. So perhaps the elderly, the parents, the disabled. Um, I put the picture on the slide, an example actually of signals used in South Africa for taxis. Um, so actually, if you didn't have digital information, you would need to understand these signals. Um, and that's not easy and wouldn't be easy for someone that's never used the service before. So th these are kind of things you need to think about. So a common question around digitization of data is why do it? It takes time, it requires a processing, requires systems. But one of the main advantages is to enable third party applications, websites or services. The example in the picture is of CityMapper, that's a quite famous app that started in London. Uh, using other people's apps and services as uh, innovations so they can come up with new experiences that you might not have thought of. It also potentially allows cost savings. So instead of developing a, your own dedicated website and all the support and maintenance that requires, or supporting all the wide range of mobile phones, you can rely on a third party that's doing that from a, for a lot of cities or regions. It also allows that uh, the apps to be tailored to particular customers or, or uh, typical user groups. For instance, a public transport operator tends to have to focus on everybody because that's what they need to do, whereas a app provider or a service provider can focus on a particular group, maybe like commuters or parents or, or other users. One thing that transport authorities have explored as, as, as an extension to digitalization of data is providing data for an open data platform. Essentially, this is where um, academics, researchers or companies can come in and collect data. Um, generally, the best practice is to make it free, but this can be a challenge for public authorities because obviously there's a cost of maintaining and operating the data. Um, and different authorities have explored different models. There's, there's options of making certain data sets uh, a, a chargeable service or uh, having a subscription cost so you don't actually charge them per data. Typically the best way of doing things is to start with a, a limited data set because the challenge of open data is that the more you provide the more questions you'll get asked um, or you might or third parties might find problems with the data. Um, another thing that's important is as well is having information that explains how your data is structured and in particular anything specific to your region. So for instance, maybe you might have data about a bridge or a tunnel. Um, so having things like metadata, effectively descriptions of the data will help the third parties and reduce the effort for you. Transport for London is probably the, the most famous use of open data. They made their their, their, their data available and they reckon they've, they've saved about um, 15 to 58 million pounds um, from this because effectively the, the apps and the other providers have developed services that they, they didn't have to do so. Another important consideration around open data and digitalization is what to share. Um, not everything is appropriate to be shared with everybody else. Um, this, this chart is something produced by the Open Data Initiative and kind of gives a structure of what you might want to make fully open um, and what you might want to make closed. There's considerations around data protects and privacy, contracts, commercial sensitiv sensitivities. So things like bus timetables are pretty much 
you can probably make it open and, I don't, and there won't be any implications of that. But at the other extreme, if you start making employment contracts open, you probably have challenges with your unions, uh, staff, etc. Um, one of the big debates around mobility services actually is the, the middle ground. So what could you make open, uh, particularly around things like ticketing or compensation plans? And th there are different discussions on this. So some suggest that everything should be open, others suggest it should be more closed. And I think this is something that ultimately the, uh, the authorities and cities need to come up with their own decisions on. Arguably, it's better to start fairly closed and progressively make things more open because that's the more risk averse approach. So moving on to the, the types of data you can look to digitize, um, an important one is mapping. Uh, so this is fundamental often for customers to understand where routes are served, where the nearest bus stop. Um, one thing that's really interesting with mapping is there's different styles and different ways of presenting the same information. So these two maps are both from Kochiba and so the, the bus rapid transit system, but one's more of a sort of a, a line diagram which is simpler to use. The other's more of a geographical map which gives you more of a feel for the actual where the information goes. So there's often often questions, and especially when you digitize a map. You've got to think about how, how you present that and often giving multiple options is great and useful and helps other people interpret it um, so things like actually having uh, latitude longitude coordinates of the the stop or the the street address or a postcode can can be useful but this is all something you need to think about and another important information source is timetables so actually understanding what's the departure arrival time, what stops the services um, stop at any point. Um, this can be complicated and it gets more more complicated the more things to consider. Things like school holidays or public holidays um, can vary the timetable. What if there's a no fixed timetable or a variable fixed timetable for, for instance with a sort of demand responses service. So this is a challenge for providing data to third parties because you need to explain all the rules. Um, there are particular formats and we'll talk about this more in the standards part in the, later in the, the training course, but I think it's important to consider. Uh, and I included that picture at the bottom because this is an example from Paris of a recent rail closure um, and I just, just I wanted to show this some of the, the complications you, you, you need to then provide all this information in a digital form. Another area of data that's often overlooked and, and that's even overlooked in Europe is around accessibility and this can be actually quite vital for your customers so if you have a a wheelchair or using a push chair or luggage understanding whether lifts are open or closed it can be actually quite important or whether step free access um, this can be challenging data to collect though and it needs to be right for it to be useful so this is something i think i recommend as a sort of an advanced part of your digitization journey or something to think about when you're you're creating other systems the, the challenge of all of this is it requires other uh, real-time data feeds from the system, so it's your, your lift maintenance system, or someone to actually report and record the current status. So it's, it's useful, it's vital, but it can be tricky. Another complex area of digital information is ticketing. And this is something even most authorities that have open data systems now are, are struggling to, to to, to create the data. Um, the challenge with ticketing is that they can be complex. So firstly, you need to understand the prices. So how much is a, a ticket? But then there's all the fare rules. So maybe you have discounts for students or the elderly, or you can't use a ticket before 9 a.m. And then if you have fare zones or fare routes, you need to have the associated maps. Now, one way of making this simpler for third parties to access is to have some kind of lookup system. So actually you don't share the, the underlying data, but you actually provide a mechanism so someone can say, oh, I want to know the cost between A and B. I'm this type of customer. 
um, and these are my preferences, tell me the price. So you then they're not trying to interpret it. Another good uh, source of digital information is real time information. So saying when is the bus, tram, train or other vehicles due to arrive. This actually makes your service a lot higher quality. Um, it makes customers feel more reassured. And there's some psychology for, behind this that actually, if people know um, know the information, they feel less anxious. Also, if they, they have certainty about the delay, they're less worried about how long it's, it's gonna take. And also gives them options to say, maybe go and get a tea or coffee or, or get a snack if they know they've got a bit of a wait. One sense of real-time information is making it accurate because actually having inaccurate information can be actually worse and actually misle can be misleading and create more challenges. So if you're gonna use this information, it's careful to make it so it's, it's, it's reliable and can be re trusted. Linked to real-time information is disruption information. Whereas real-time information tends to talk about minor changes, disruption is covers big changes. So for instance, maybe a service is closed overnight or there's a particular train has been canceled. This can be very challenging to um, provide a good experience for customers because you want to know firstly what the disruption is and what the impact is, but also what the other options are. So this is this again is something that's really important to consider, but also you need some good processes around it. So it's actually having all the, all the, all the supporting information. Um, one option with this is often actually to make people aware of the disruption, but then perhaps pass them to a customer service agent or a call center where they can find out the more detailed information. Then, sort of, finally, the other thing to consider around digitization, and I sort of hinted at this in some of my previous slides, is that digitization should be considered with simplification because actually, the simpler you make your information, the easier it is to share. Um, ticketing information is a particular one of this, and I just showed you the example on the right is an example of. Um, information around some bus rules in in the uk and you can see that's complicated so i think that there's there's some things here to think about of can you actually make it simpler because it's easy to share it's easy to maintain and to check the data is right um, and that's actually quite important and something that's missed that you, you don't want to share the wrong data with people um, you'll get upset suppliers, research, and ultimately upset customers. So um, it's an important thing to think about.